Here we are again. Uh, let's talk about the shopping cart tutorial that we've been working on. And uh, I know this has been going on for a while. I, I didn't imagine that it would go this long, and I actually see at least a few more videos to finish this up. Um, but anyway, uh, here we are. And I've got the example open, and I'm looking at the HTML file right now. And here it is in the browser, and it has a problem because I was experimenting there. Um, and here it is, it's functioning. I've got a few items in my cart and I can add a couple or add them this way and change the number here. And <clears> then <throat> everything functions, right? So, you know, I, I like what I have here, but the code that I'm using um, has the potential to, to have problems, right? And, you know, imagine if we have all of the code here in shopping cart JS, and you wanted to import this into another project or share it with another person, um, those people, they might not understand how the cart functions. You know, you'd have to give them a long document to describe everything, or they might just experiment to figure things out. And they may do, you know, some unexpected, you know, things with your, with your code, and then it would cause it not to work. And then they'd ask you, hey, why doesn't this work, right? Um, so what we want to do as, you know, software engineers... Uh, is to, um, you know, make the code, you know, as robust as possible and to work in, you know, as many situations, but also to not work when it's not supposed to work or to, you know, keep people from doing things that they shouldn't be doing, right? Or encourage, you know, good behavior or good usage of the code, right? Let's explain. So one of the things we have here is, is shopping cart creates a, an object here called shopping cart. Right, so so in, when you load up Shopping Cart JS, it creates a global variable. This is this name right here, Shopping Cart JS, is available anywhere inside JavaScript. So any code could use this name. So if another piece of code used this name, you know, then we might have some problems, right? Um, also, any any piece of code can access this name and then access any property of it. Okay, so that means, you know, people could go into your code and do something like this. They could say, you know, shopping cart dot cart equals empty. Maybe they want to, you know, clear the cart, right? So they, they call shopping cart dot cart and they set it equal to an empty array thinking that they're going to clear the cart. And then, um, and then what do they get, right? They, the cart doesn't clear and they wonder what's going on and then they click to add an item. And then all the items are gone except for the new item. So it did clear the cart, but it just didn't refresh the view. So then they have to figure out that maybe, you know, they should have called, you know, display cart afterwards, right? And that's not too bad, right? So now I, I, I refresh and yeah, so the cart is cleared. But then they think, well, actually, you know, what if I what if I want to add something to the cart, but I don't want to use the add item to cart method. So what they do is they say, you know, shopping cart dot, you know, um, or dot cart um, dot push, you know, because cart is an array, right? So they want to add something to the array and they want to add a food bar to the array. Right, so they do something like this. They don't realize that every item in the cart needs to be an item object with a count and a and a price or something, right? And so now when they refresh their cart, you know, now I'm getting this undefined, right? And actually, you know, it didn't display the item immediately, right? You know, it doesn't show it the first time. And then as soon as I add an item, all of a sudden I've got this undefined and, you know, my cart isn't functioning correctly, right? And that's because they can they can access these properties, right? So what I would like to do is I'd like to hide this cart property so that it's not available outside. And any other methods or properties of shopping cart that are not available outside of, you know, that are they're not available publicly, let's say, like I want to hide those so, so other people, other developers can't access them. I want to make my shopping cart only expose publicly it's, you know, methods that should be exposed publicly, right? So, so you know, add item to cart, right? Um, set count for item, uh, remove item from cart, 
remove item from cart all. Those are all public methods, and those are the methods that I want people using. So if we use these, we know because we engineered and we built our cart that those methods are the ones that will always function correctly. You call on them. If you pass them the right parameters, then they do their job, and then everything internally functions the way that it should, okay? Also, you know, when we set the cart like this um, or add an item to cart, these these don't get saved to local storage. So if someone's using this, we could run into a problem where the values that they set or change do not get saved to local storage, right? And so that could also create another unpredictable behavior, right? If we're using the methods that we created, like set item, add item, and stuff like that, you know, we know that those items are tied into um, save, right? So that they save the, the data to local storage, right? So so how do we go about doing this, right? Um, this is video is kind of going on, so maybe I'll, I'll start really getting into this in earnest in another video. But what we're going to do is we're going to use um, a closure, okay? And a closure is a special, um, it's not actually, it's not that special. It's just a function, right? So, you know, if we create a function like this, okay, and then we put a variable inside here, provit, wait, private, there we go, right? Equals, you know, 11, right? Okay, so inside of this function, this variable called private is not accessible. The world, you know, the rest of JavaScript cannot access the variable private. So, you know, in our case, like what I, what I want to do is I want to make the cart private. So I might say cart is a, is a variable inside of a function, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a function like this with the cart variable and other Fun methods that we want to keep private, we're going to declare them inside here, and um, and then they won't be accessible from the outside world. They won't be part of the global scope, right? So the other thing we're going to do in order to make public features of our of our you know our our special closure object that we're going to create, what we're going to do is we're going to return an object, right? And the object that we return, we're going to add properties to that object that are um, that are that are that we want to be public right so so here if i make an object this way and then i say you know object dot you know um public method equals a function like this when this function returns this object then public method will be available through this object so so you'll be able to call on that from outside okay so we'll, we'll do another example with this but just very quickly like how this is going to work is you know when you call on this function it'll return an object here and only um, properties of this object will be public then all the stuff inside here is not going to be available we won't be able to access it but the thing is this this function it kind of lives on like after we call it the first time and as long as it's got you know variables with values inside of it those live on inside javascript so javascript keeps track of them in memory and any features inside here can access these variables so for example if public method wanted to you know you know console log the count of the cart you know um you could say, you know, cart.count or length, actually length. There we go, right? Okay. So, you know, this public method has access to the private variable, right? But the outside world that has access to object can only call on the, the public method. They can't call on, on these, fe these private features, okay? So anyway, so there's a little more to this, but that's the general idea. So we're just going to reconfigure all the code that we have in Shopping Cart JS so it looks more like this, right? It's going to have a little bit different arrangement. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, that's where we're going to go with our next video and uh, you guys all have a nice day.